Alright, I'm here with the 2005 Jeep Grand Cherokee model. Today we're going to be putting a Wrangler bumper that we have right here on to the front of this, the Grand Cherokee. Now, we're going to need to make a few cuts on this in order to make this work, and uh, we did the measurements, should fit just right. I'm just going to need to move a few things around. We've actually got a website already. Alright, basically we got to take off this whole front. The entire front bumper's already been pulled off. There was covers on both sides here that we had to get rid of in order for it to, to actually go in place. And then this front here, it's only actually held in by these push pins. They're pretty easy to get off. You just pop it open and then you can just peel it right on out. It goes back in the same way, so you're going to want to save all these. How many are there? Uh, there's supposed to be six. But as you can see when we remove that one there for the washer fluid. <coughs> Did I get it right? This is a 2005 model? Yes. Okay. Alright, the next thing, the new bumper is going to be going in between here and here. As you can see, this the bumper here is actually pretty flimsy metal. Alright, basically, um, we didn't want to spend a lot of money on a Jeep Grand Cherokee bumper. Um, they don't really make a lot of them for this year model, just because of the simple fact that the bumper doesn't hold that much weight. Uh, bumpers like this that are made, we found to be about anywhere from $1,200 to $1,400. Uh, the one that we have here is basically a cheap one that you can get for a Jeep Wrangler. So that's what we're going to try and do is go ahead and mount this to the bumper of the Jeep. Um, right now, um, I don't want to say what the manufacturer is because I don't know if they're going to be advertising with us in the future or not. I didn't know if they wanted our, the name associated with their our, uh, the video that we're making right now. So we're going to go ahead and turn this around. Anybody that's trying to purchase one of these online, this is how the bolts, the bolt pattern is. Your bumper actually fits through this section here and is actually crushed in between the bolts. Alright, basically, the center portion of the bumper is actually pretty strong, but this outside, as you can see, is pretty flimsy, it moves around a lot. So what we're going to try and do is, is that in between these two points here, the bumper is actually the exact same length. So what we're going to try and do is go ahead and just shave this portion off, top and bottom, and slide it right on in. Now if you can see through the front bumper here, there's already a hole that's already been cut. It's for mounting something else. So what we're going to try and do is we're going to go straight up and go straight up through here and cut a hole through the top so that we'll have a place to mount the bolts. Alright, basically we're just using a four and a half inch grinder bit. It's actually a cutting bit. When you actually, when you check it out, you're going to make sure because it actually is kind of idiot proof. It'll say it'll have a big piece of metal there that's made for like grinding something else. They'll have that on there. But this is going to be really good at cutting uh, what we're needing to get done today. And for right now, we're going to go ahead and cut here and cut here because this section, like I said before, is not very strong. This section in the middle is actually pretty strong. So we're going to go ahead and chop this and there shouldn't be any type of structural problems. Let's get started.
All right, so basically we're wanting to get it as close to this bar as possible. We don't actually want to cut into the frame of the vehicle, but we want to get it as close as possible. Even if this is off by just a little bit, we can at least bang this over just a little bit in order to get it to fit. Now for the second side. We're going to try and bang this down a little bit so that we can get it really close to the actual metal for the frame. All right, so basically what we found out was is that the two spacers in between the, uh, the frame ends uh, is going to have a problem with these two ends right here. We look like we need to take off about maybe an eighth of an inch to a quarter of an inch off of each side so that we're good and centered. Uh, shouldn't take that long, especially since we already had the cutting bit already out. Uh, I want to point out over here we're also going to have to take off the support bars here. It's actually for um, just the locking mechanism.
Okay. Now we're just bending down those little uh, pieces right there in order to put it onto the bumper a bit better. It was hitting right here. Right, right, y'all. So let's see if it works now. Um, no, we're not even close on that side. The other side's getting there. Uh, problem is, is that we need to be able to beat this thing straight. <laughs> it's still hitting the lip right there, just a little bit. How much? Um, by about, I don't know, so a few if atoms. So this side right here, then we should be good then? Yeah, that should be fine. We had to grind it on the top, and then we had to straighten the brackets on the bottom to make sure that they were lining up just perfectly. We had to beat on it a little bit, but that's fine. What we're going to end up doing is drilling holes. Once we've marked on the inside where these holes are supposed to be, we're going to go in with half-inch lag bolts all the way through. Uh, I like to use galvanized steel because literally these four bolts are going to hold up the 7,000 pounds or plus of pulling this thing out of the mud. Uh, once you get over the tires, anybody knows once you get that far in mud, your vehicle can weigh twice to three times as much as it normally does, especially if it gets a suction on the tires. So basically, if we were being pulled out of the mud in that type of situation, the bumper would be just pulled right on off, the vehicle would stay where it's at. All right, a little, little demo on what we just did. Um, we remounted these uh, holding pieces on here. We went under here and we went under here, which took quite a bit of drilling, but we managed. We're going to eventually have to shave the top of these bolts off um, in order to get that bumper sitting on here just right. But other than that, it's holding up just fine. Um, should hold. This is working now. It's, it's, uh, it's properly braced. It still closes and everything. Angle hasn't really changed much. Alright, here are the holes we drilled for the inside of the bumper. They will be holding on to... Uh, this is the one we drilled. And over here, this one, the bolt will run straight through here. Alright, it's on fully now and we've been driving around with it for a few days. Uh, right here we made a cut with the drill bit to make it sit better. Um, with the new bumper, right here and here. Um, we did a little skip, we thought we filmed it, but we didn't. Um, there are two drill bits, well, there's, we drilled one hole here, and one hole right about here, and then we stuck the bolt through it. However, uh, this right here, this bolt gave us a lot of trouble. Well, both of them did, and uh, so what we ended up doing was um, uh, we got the bolt part of the way through, and then to fold this, uh, to push this back to where it would sit right, we basically pressed this part up against a tree, and then uh, we shoved the bolt 
through the top portion. Uh, I'm going to try to show it. It's right in here. Uh, so once we line that up, we put the bolt on. We, well, we put the nut over the bolts and tightened it a lot. It needs to squish the piece that it's sitting on so it fits better. Um, and that's, that's how we did it.